All right, welcome back. So we're going to continue on with this, talking about the magic of values. Um, we're going to be doing some more of our, our basic shapes. We're going to be doing a pyramid right now. I'm still going to be using my, my five pencils. I've got my 4B, my 2B, my HB, my 2H, my 4H. Remember, the 4H is the lightest. The 2H is a little darker. The HB is darker than any one of the H pencils. The 2B is darker than the HB, and the 4B is the darkest of all. Remember that the B pencils are the dark family. The, they stand for black or, you know, so the higher the number, the blacker the pencil, the darker the pencil. The H pencils, the higher the number, the lighter the pencil. And the HB is right in the middle. So, again, the 4H is our lightest, and then it gets darker. 2H, HB, 2B, and 4B is the darkest. All right. I also have my, this is a little uh, white eraser. I showed you this uh, earlier on. This has been sharpened with a sanding pad. Sanding pad is just one of these little things that you can, or you can use a, a sanding pad from any Home Depot or sandpaper or anything. Uh, if you do that, you want the grit to be somewhere around a 200. 220 would be a more standard. Uh, 220, 120, somewhere in there. You don't want anything lower. If it's 60 grit, that's really rough. The higher the number, the, the finer the grit. Uh, 400 would be fine too. Uh, but anyways, I, I went ahead and sanded this off. But the, uh, I used to work in a cabinet shop so uh, with my dad. And so I know that this sandpaper here is about 120 grit. Um, we also have my a little piece of kneaded eraser. Remember, the kneaded eraser can be pulled apart to clean it. Uh, you can, it's also malleable, so we can go ahead and sculpt it into whatever size we want. Okay. So we'll put this aside, and we're going to move aside some of our materials. So I've got really lightly drawn in, uh, so light that you probably can't, you can't even see it on this camera, so you have to take my word for it. But I've got this pyramid drawn in. And I wanted to explain what this is. So these uh, little symbols here represent uh, a light. And usually you'll represent them as a cone. If you have them as just like, like a little pointer, that means it's flat. That means it's a true profile. As it comes around, we start to see it since it's a cone, as we start to come around, we start to see a bit of the cone. A little bit of the cone here, much more of the circle of the cone there. And as this goes behind, again, we see the front side of that ellipse. Not the back, but the front. So this means this has gone around the back and is now shining from the back side of this pyramid. So you'll see me draw these symbols sometimes. And not just me, but lots of artists. And it's a notation. It's to try to note down or try to understand better where is your light source coming from? And you know, if you're if you're if we're drawing from life, it's not that big a deal. But if I'm making something up or I'm creating something that doesn't exist, uh, like fantasy, you know, fan, fan, fantastical types of artwork, science fiction, or illustration, or animation, or you know, comic book art, or something like that. I need to know where the light is. So this is just a notation to tell me where the light is. Now, according to this, I have four different lights. We never have that many lights. But this was just to explain that this right here, again, is coming around. And this is almost pointing straight at it. Not quite. It's a little bit of an angle. But it's around the front and almost pointing straight at it. This has moved around the side a little bit. Not the true side like this. But it's still further around, you know, so it's, it's turned. The light has turned like it's going around this little curve here, rotating around this object in, a, in an orbit or something. So this is almost full frontal or straight on, not quite. This is more like three-quarter lighting. This would be straight profile lighting, and this would be backlit coming from the back. And if we kept going around, there would be another cone here that would be even more, you know, it would get rounder, which means it would be more towards the back. You know, it's all about that circle. How much of that circle do we see? If we if we had something like that, again, where we could really see just a, where it's very much that circle, uh, again, that would be almost straight at the back. 
And so I just wanted to explain what these lights, what this means. This is a notation of where the light is. As it goes around the back, we see the, the curvature of the ellipse because it's a cone. As it gets further, we would see even more of the ellipse as it continues to go around. So again, this would be much more around, so that would be, it'd be further around the corner. The light would be coming, it would be backlit. This would be more towards the front. So we're not gonna, so that's what those mean, that's what those symbols mean. I'm gonna actually use sort of this three-quarter lighting. So I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I guess I've done it too dark to erase it, but I'm gonna be using this lighting scenario right here. You always want one light source. If you're doing some sort of advanced drawing, sometimes you'll do a, a dual light source, uh, the, or a, maybe even a third light source. That's really difficult. After that, it just goes flat. And even when you're dealing as an artist, dealing with a dual light source or even a, a, you know, three lights, that's really hard to do because, again, it starts to flatten things out. And as an artist, you have to really design it so that it still looks like it has depth. So I'm going to be using this, this lighting right here for my little um, pyramid. Now, a pyramid, depend, whenever we're looking, at, and this is a, a five-sided pyramid, it's going to have, you know, four sides and then the bottom that it sits on. And so it's, a fi it's going to be a five-sided pyramid. Uh, with a five-sided pyramid, you know, it's got this, the base and it's got this side and there's another side there, another side. So you've got like the front left and the back left and the front right and the back right and you've got the base. And the, the thing with these guys is, is unless I'm like standing up and looking down at it, or maybe looking up, but then you'd mostly be seeing the bottom. You can only see two sides of a pyramid. And again, this is really light, but we're gonna start this. So what we're gonna have <clears throat> is we're gonna have a light source, pardon me, not a light source, but the light side and then the shadow side. So remember with something flat, and this is gonna be a flat object, uh, we, we only have five types of form shadows that we, if we can see all the different planes. But because we can only see two planes, we'll basically, we'll have highlight. Uh, maybe I'll make these a little darker. We can have highlight. So we'll be able to see that. We'll be able to see the light tones or the light values. Okay. We'll be able to see the dark tones. or the dark values. There is no core shadow because it's a flat, these are flat planes. And so the fourth thing we'll be able to see is reflected light. Reflected light. And since it's also, it's gonna have a cast shadow of course as well. And in the cast shadow we'll see where it touches for the occlusion shadow. And I could even go in here to kind of just indicate this will help us kind of visualize the base of this of this pyramid. I've also zoomed in on this so it's, it's really much smaller than the other things that we were drawing. Oh, we're going to try to make, make this uh, so this will be a little shorter. The other videos were some of the sort of the, the, mo the core shapes and these are core shapes but they're so, some of the minor ones. I don't, I don't mean to diminish them but I also you know the other ones took almost two hours and we're gonna see if we can really shave this down considerably something like maybe 30 minutes um, so we're gonna have the cash out on the cash out is just gonna be going off the page here I can just go again go ahead and indicate some of that this cast shadow now I'm using a um, I was using a wrist swing uh, I'm not moving my arm very much, but I'm using actually an elbow swing. But I've also got my uh, fingernails, the back of my fingernails are on the paper, so I get a little bit more stability as I'm using this. And the pencil I'm using is a 2B, so it's a little bit softer. Um, normally I'd be a little more cautious with this, but we're going to see if we can, again, this can help us. If we do it this way, it can save us some time. But it can also, because it's such a, a darker pencil, if, 
it can go um, and get away from us. We, the value can really get get away from us, and we'll have, we can sometimes have much less control. Um, but so it's that whenever we're trying to draw, we're always trying to think of, hey, what's how much how long is it going to take me? You know, so I can do some short cutting versus uh, is the shortcut to um, is it dangerous to do so? Dangerous is the wrong word, but is it going to is would my drawing suffer? Do I have the control to be able to actually make full use of the tool? Okay, so again, we're going to have this cast shadow casting off here. I'm going to use this 2B and I'm going to go ahead and just begin to um, put in the, 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 the dark tones. So this is going to be the shadow side. Now remember, it is going to be going, this is the edge, and it's going to be getting darker here and getting lighter as it goes away from that edge, and that's because of reflected light. It's not because it's a core shadow. Sometimes people will misunderstand and think that perhaps it's a core shadow, but it's not. It's because of reflected light. So again, the highest point of contrast is going to be where this edge meets the light edge. That's going to be the highest point of contrast. We're also going to have, it's going to get lighter as it comes down this way because of reflected light this way. So it's going to be getting lighter as it comes down this way. It's going to be getting lighter as it goes across that way. So, and that, that's the subtlety we want. Now sometimes, sometimes maybe because of the technique or maybe we're doing cross hatching or something like, you know, in ink or something, maybe we can't get all those nuances. But since we're using pencil, all that little subtlety with, with pencil, we can we can we can try to get some of that subtlety. Now, again, this is a this is a, a starting class, and I understand that. But I'm just I'm going to say that that's what we're shooting for. And again, we're we're, we're trying to keep I'm keeping everything really basic, so that way it doesn't become. You know, the first time to do this, it's it's hard enough as it is. We don't, you know, need any more pressure, any extra you know extra added pressure. And so we're, you know, we're going to do it, you know, in, in where we're trying to capture all those different types of form shadows, but we're going to keep it easy and simple. Where this isn't, you know, I, I've never been a, a real believer in showboating unless you're actually, you know, if I'm in a, in, you know, in a, in a room with, you know, professionals and, and advanced students, and we're like, okay, well, let's do a little bit of showboating, because they already know the concept, so I, I don't need to slow it down and you know, and things like that, but for, for those that are just like, hey, I'm, st I'm just trying to get my brain around how this stuff works. Uh, I think showboating is, can have a, the, the opposite effect. People can go, man, I just, I don't know that I can do that. I, I just don't know if it's, you know, if it's something that I want to pursue, if, if that just looks, you know, just so daunting. And so I don't want that. So we're just doing, again, we're, and again, this, we're, we're still trying to get, you know, gradation going from left to right, we're trying to get a gradation going from uh, top to bottom. And that in itself is going to be hard enough. So again, I don't, I'm not trying to diminish what we're after. We're still trying to give a feeling of the third dimension. But you're not, I'm not going to sit here and do a, a video, like some quick video that I did, quick time, or you know, where it took me four or six hours and I compress it down to 10 minutes just to show, ooh, look how good my drawing can be. I, I'm, I'm, that's, that's not teaching. This is really about teaching. It's not about, oh, looky, looky, looky what I can do. Now, the cool part is, is that once we learn how to do this, you can actually start to amaze people and your friends and family. And that's where we want to go. But we're, we're starting out very simple. This is the equivalent of you know, learning the bass clef and the treble clef. And Mary had a little lamb. And, and that's what we're doing. We're, 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 we're using the keys. We are using values. Again, values are our notes. And um, along with, a, you know, a handful of ideas of drawing concepts like perspective and other things. Uh, if you haven't had the, uh, the Power of Line or my first series where we go over site measure methods and construction drawing and all that, you really want to, and where we draw uh, cylinders and, and boxes and and pyramids and how do we draw them effectively, you really want to take that class because that will really help you with the foundational ideas of contour, in other words, line drawing and how to deal with complex line drawings. So I'm already starting to get a bit of a gradation over here. 
and we haven't been going all that long, and that's what we're looking for. So again, that 2B pencil can, if, as long as I can control it, and that's, you know, if you find, if I found that it was getting too dark too quickly, or, you know, it just seemed like everything was too, just getting too black and too uniform, well, then you ditch the pencil. Uh, I have been, now I've been talking a lot, and I guess I, I haven't been, so I've been using a finger swing for, I, I quit using the, uh, after I roughed this in, to get a basic tone, I've gone to just the finger swing. Uh, this is the one where I'm just scooting it back and forth. This is not the tapered stroke, or the feathered stroke, or the gradated stroke. This is just simply scooting it back and forth. And I'm spending more time up here so it's darker up here, and less time down here so it's lighter down here. I'm spending more time over here and less time over here. And that's how we're going to get this, to give this some control. And remember that this has to be shadow, so everything in the shadow has to be darker than anything in the light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch now because, again, I've got all this texture here because that was a B pencil. And remember, we can get rid of that texture by using an H pencil. So I, I went and grabbed my 4H. I'm still going to be using a finger swing. But the 4H does a couple things for me. Um, and if I felt that my edge had gotten a little, it had meandered like it's crossed into the the realm of so this will be the highlight along this edge. It'll also be a highlight at the top. But mostly the highlight we would see on the edge. Of course, if it was pointed, there would be no highlight at the top of this. So it just depends on what type of... Like if it's a nice, really, really hard point, there would be no, uh, no highlight at the top of it. So I do have to... So I think I'll do that. I'll just go ahead and make this a nice, crisp top. So that means the highlight will be all along that edge. Okay. So this is the this is probably where I'm going to slow down a little bit, and we're going to try to get this a nice clean edge, as we say, as straight as we can. If I if I thought I could, if I thought I needed something to help me get it straighter, I could come over with a ruler or any sort of straight, even a straight piece of paper. I could lay that down like so. Now, sometimes people are like, I think that's cheating and. Wow, I think you should do it all by hand and all that stuff, and and I understand that you, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be using a ruler if you're afraid that you can't do it. But if you're like, look, because I've done tons of straight lines and I've, I've paid the price in art school, spending 24 hours on shading projects and and everything had to be done completely by hand and and uh, you know no templates, no rulers, no nothing. Uh, yeah, I've done that. And so, yeah, I could sit there and, and double my time trying to clean it up. Or, this is another one. Let's say I want this, this line here to be nice and clean. I could take a straight edge. Now, this is just a straight edge. Uh, I, again, I could use a piece of paper. I could use anything for this, really. I could lay it right along there. Let's line that up. And then, I'll take my eraser and go right along that edge. And that will clean the edge up. Okay, so that's a real quick way again of cleaning cleaning up my edges. And now this was sketched by hand, so and my lines aren't aren't bad. If you've seen my, again, if you've done the the, the first class, you know the power of line, or you know, we talk about how to draw cubes and how to draw cones and how to draw cylinders and sight measuring methods and construction methods and all this different stuff. You know we can do a, a pretty decent line by hand if I if, if you warm up. And I can, do, I can do a decent line if I warm up. Is it perfect? No, not even close. But it, it's still, you're like, oh, yeah, hand ruled. That's pretty, pretty well done. Um, so, again, I could, I could sit there for, like, you know, an hour trying to just get everything just so. Or I can grab a ruler and take about a minute. And, again, for a lot of time, a lot of times, and, again, this is after you've paid your dues, and that means you've done your practicing and you've, You've done the edges, and you spent the time where you took an hour to do that edge. You need to do that. Don't 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 sidestep and thinking that somehow, you know, you, you're winning in at a game, and no, no one knows that you just sidestepped it. Because if you if you try to get out of doing it at some point, uh, your drawing will never improve. So I'm just saying, uh, we're using this to save time, but I'm, I don't want you to think that it's not important to pay the price of taking time to. You know, maybe do one of these all by hand and make sure that the edges are as clean as you can possibly make them. You want to do a couple of those like that. Keep them small. 
Uh, you don't need to do a full page of that. If I did a full page, this thing goes way off the camera. But it's it's like an uh, it's like a 14 by 17 sheet of paper. If I did a big old 14 by 17, you know, graphite drawing, it, it would take me all night long to get that thing to have all the subtlety that I want. If, and if I was doing all the edges by hand and everything else, you don't need to do that. Now that's that's too. I mean, you you know, if you're like, well, I want to be a professional. Well, maybe you want to do it once, but it's not something that you, you know, you, know, you only need to pay that price once, and then you're like, I got it, I can do it, I, I understand how to do it, I know that I can do it, and now I'm just going to do some things to save myself some time. And so artists have done that throughout the centuries. You know, there was, you know, they, back in the day, these are, these are based af after some of the classical methods. Uh... And the, uh, the, the, uh, the classical artists were really heavily trained. And so like their first couple of years was drawing lines until they could do, you know, a, they could draw a line that looked almost as if it was hand ruled, not quite, but almost, you know, so much enough to go, wow, that was done by hand. That's, that's, that's amazing. And then once they mastered that, they use straight edges to save time. So again, first they built the in the the ability to do it, and then because you know these guys were going on to create businesses, the bottegas in Italy, time was money, and so they were like, yeah, okay, now we're going to save. Now that you know how to do it, and you can draw really well, we're going to have you save some time. Here's a straight edge. So that's how it went. So that and so. And, and we're not going to try to train you like that. I mean, most people just don't have the wherewithal, you know, the uh, the ability to keep their attention span and not, you know, get bored to tears trying to do something like that. And there's a point at which I say, look, a little bit of that's good, too much that I, I find almost nonsensical. But, um, again, with my classes, if you've done the, the power of line, we have, you know, a little exercise that I expect people to do and I want people to do because it will help their drawing if they do it, where three times a week they draw straight lines for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes, three times a week. And so, you know, after you've done that for a year or two years or five years, you've drawn tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of lines. You can draw a very good line. It's just, it's just like anything. The more you do it, the better it's going to be. Um... And so that's what we're doing here. And again, all I've been using is my 4-H. Again, I've been spending more time up here. I've been coming here and then coming out, spending more time here where it's darker, less time where it gets lighter. All the same stuff we've been doing for all our other, all our other drawings. It's the same sort of thing we're doing with this guy. And again, and I'm not going to sit here. So again, we're not going to sit here all day long because again, it's very, very similar. But all I've used so far is the 2B and the 4H. And again, this is this is a light pyramid and all that good stuff. I think I actually need to get in here and start start uh, working on some other areas, developing some other areas uh, as far as that goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to grab my oh I got my 4H pencil and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come come to the light. Now most of this is going to be light tone. There's still going to be gradation with the light. The, the light tones are a little darker here and they're a little lighter down here. But it's going to be so soft that if I was looking at the object, I would hardly be able to see that. I'd hardly be able to detect it. And so we're going to use this 4H because it is the lightest pencil. It's also the smoothest. Like the tone, when you start making value with this. The value just you, you can make it so smooth if you if you and again I'm just using a finger swing and it's just the regular finger swing. We're not doing anything special. This is not the gradated stroke. And if you've forgotten what the gradated stroke, in other words, also called the tapered stroke, also referred to as the feathered stroke, um, we're not doing that. We're just it's this is just again we're using a very basic technique here. And by using that t technique, now I am trying to keep, I can see I've got some spacing between my lines. So that's some tracking issues. So I do need to, to pay attention and try to keep my 
self-aware of the ed, you know the, the fact that I need to overlap the previous line so that I get a solid tone of value. And so again, this is going to be It's going to be a little darker, getting lighter, going this way. A little darker, getting lighter this way. But just very, very soft, very subtle. If I'm, too, if I'm not, if I'm, if I hit it too hard, or in other words, if I, if if I do that too much, if I make it too dark, it won't look like it's in the light anymore. So I have to be very, very cautious of that. Again, that's why I'm using that 4H pencil. The 4H pencil is the lightest pencil that they that I have in my drawing repertoire, if you will. And so being the lightest pencil, it's the one I'm gonna, it's the one I'm gonna use so that this doesn't get too dark, because if it does, everything goes flat. Now the one thing we won't have here is we won't have middle value. Right now we've got dark tone, reflected light, we've got light tone, that's three, we have highlight, that's four, you know, and that's all we can see. The fifth one for our middle values is actually around, it'd be going around, it would be the, the back right side would be that middle value. So, anyways, I'm just going to continue using my finger swing, using that 4H. Okay. Now again, that 4-H, this object has no relationship. There's no what's called a ground, meaning there's no background. There's no foreground. It's just this kind of this floating in this nebula of white paper. And that can be, that will just flatten stuff out. So what I'm going to do is we're going we're gonna to just indicate back here like perhaps there's the wall and this wall that I'm drawing and let's try to make it at least almost straight shall we we have to use our imagination on that one and because of the fact that I'm drawing flat and this is further away from me I'm just gonna go ahead and check it yeah so we never draw flat. We're doing it for this, for the, uh, for my demo here, because it's easier for you to see the camera. That's the only reason I'm doing doing it like this. Otherwise, I would never draw like this. But because I'm drawing in distortion, and because I've also got further away from me, so again, I'm kind of reaching out to get to get to this place. Uh, it really distorts the way I see things, and so I got to be really ca cautious of this. So, I've got an HV pencil, and again, I'm using a finger swing now. And this is supposed to be the wall. This is just a flat wall, and um, I've got this line in here for my, I probably should have erased that before I started putting value on it. Okay. So, HB pencil. And the wall, since it's further back, if the light is here, the wall's further back, uh, even if they were the same value, this would be darker. But they're probably not. So if this was a white pyramid, then um, the wall, and the wall was an off-white, the wall would be darker, right? And so, Let's just go ahead and make this back wall. We're going to give it a value. And by having a context that will greatly affect how this pyramid looks. This is called activating a space because I'm putting value back there. All of a sudden, that value relates to the other values. 
and it has a relationship. Okay. Like so. All right. Now, this is just, I've laid this in. We haven't played with this much at all. And we're going to go ahead and bring this in. Now, I've got this darker area where these two different, they're going different directions, so when they cross, they get a little darker when you do that. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And if this was a table, as the, as the light gets next to the table, there's going to be a slight gradation as it's, dropping behind the table. Now, the next thing I want to do is, is this, this table is going to have quite a bit of light on it. Um, and we want to decide, I want a value here on the table as well. And so I'm going to just go ahead and, maybe well, this is a light blue tablecloth. And if it's a light blue tablecloth, it's going to be light, but it won't be as light as my white pyramid. This is actually going to, I'm actually not taking enough time so that you can see sort of what's called the grain. This is going the same direction as that, and it's flattening it out. For right now, I'm just laying this in. We're not going to leave it like that, but we are going to lay this in like this. So at least for right now, again, it's going to be a little flatter. And again, we go ahead and bring this out here, and we bring this out here. All right. So now we've got a little bit of value going on here, a little bit of a relationship. And that was an HP pencil um, towards the end. I think I was using my hand off the paper, uh, using a little bit of a, I was either using a finger swing with my hand off the paper or using a wrist swing. I'm not quite sure which I was doing, but you can do either. The one's not better than the other. It's just I'm not, I'm not sure which I was doing, but hopefully you're able to go, oh yeah. But uh, unless my hand's not in the camera and then you're like, I don't know what he's doing. Well, right now, I've got my hand in a tripod grip, and I'm moving it right to left, and I'm using a wrist swing. This way I cover more area. So again, the whole idea of the fingers versus the wrist versus the elbow is how much area do I want to cover? That's really the only, the only reason we, and of course a little bit about control, the finger swing will always have more control than any of the other two. But right now I'm actually, again, I'm using that wrist swing. Moving at the wrist. My fingers aren't moving, it's my wrist that's moving. So, again, we're going to make a little bit of a gradation where it gets darker as it goes back. And it gets a little lighter as it comes forward. Again, I'm using now. I'm actually using an, an elbow swing because I'm trying to cover more area. Okay. All right. So again, we've got a little bit of a relationship happening. We can start to see a little bit better what's going on with our pyramid. Um. So that's looking good. Now, of the two, I want the I want to go ahead and just darken a little bit this edge, for the where it's supposed to be in shadow. So it looked nice and dark until I put these other values on there. So now it's too light. It's going to go a little darker, but I want to make sure 
I'm going to get an HB pencil. I'm going to use this HB pencil. I'm just going to darken the edge just slightly because I don't want to, I don't want to lose that edge. So, and this edge should be darker than any one of the, anything else. So we're going to keep that. Uh, we're going to make this, um, we're going to make the wall darker than the tablecloth. So maybe this is, this wall is a light gray or something like that. Okay, now this is a light gray wall in, in light. So, it will be a little darker, but I want you to understand that this should, will be darker than that. Because unless this was a wall that was really dark, like leather or something like that, then it's going to be light enough that with the light on it, it's going to make it lighter and it will be lighter than the shadows in my pyramid. So my pyramid is still just barely indicated here. We've still got all kinds of stuff for this pyramid, all kinds of plans. We're going to go back in here and work it. We just need enough value back here that we can relate the values together. Which surface is lighter, which surface is darker? Well, in general, the, the uh, let's say our pyramid is the lightest, but it also has a shadow side. Whereas the tablecloth and the wall are both in light. Now the wall would be in half tone in the, or in other words, in middle values because it's a vertical plane. Uh, because of this, there's gonna be more light hitting this, you know, this here and the table because it's down at an angle. And it's gonna be hitting more there than on the, on the wall. And so we wanna be aware of that. Now the next thing we're going to do with this is we're going to take our 2H pencil and with our 2H pencil we're going to go back in here and we're trying to fill in like there's a line through here it looks like um, perhaps a line got dug into the paper that's unfortunate certainly don't want that um, and so I'm going to I'm going to see if I can work with it like sometimes you you can work with it and take a lot of that out there's other times now I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm 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 still using just a, I'm not using a feathered stroke yet. Well, now I am a little bit. Um, and the reason why is you have much more control with that feathered stroke. So this is the part where we're going to start to everything else up to this point has been a rough in, as we call it, or a lay in. In other words, we're we're just getting the basic values put down there. We're not dealing with any of that nuancey stuff, the subtlety, as we like to say. That hasn't been addressed yet, but we will start to do that now. So, again, I'm using more of sort of that, that feathered stroke, and I'm only pulling down one direction when I use that feathered stroke. To create the back of that wall. Now, we're going to go ahead and come over here to the same thing. Again, part of this... If I thought I couldn't get rid of some of that texture and it looks like I may not be able to, well, I could certainly come in here with um, a brush and brush, brush, brush that a little bit. And we haven't done that. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to grab a brush and we'll, we'll, we'll come into here a little bit, see if we can soften that. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I went ahead and got, this is just a three-quarter really cheap uh, soft watercolor brush and I want to see so again sometimes we can use this sometimes I'll refer to this as the nuclear option because I don't want to do this if I don't have to uh, it, first off it, it softens everything blows out all the wonderful soft value if you've been trying to really keep the value nice and subtle it's going to take all that off and you'll have to go back in and rebuild the value in but what this is doing is it's softening some of those scratches. It's also, because this is getting softer, this looks, because of the texture of the paper, like it has more detail, even though it doesn't, it has more texture, which the eye reads as, oh, there's, there, there's a detail, there's texture. Um, and so this actually is going to come forward as this stuff here gets a little softer. So there's sometimes we'll use this to um, to control our... Our, feel, our, our, uh, our feeling of detail or blurring stuff out 
you know, almost like we were doing, you, you know, in Photoshop and doing different types of smart, you know, you know, Gaussian blurs and different types of blurring uh, sorts of ideas. Again, I could even see if we could soften some of the texture in here really quickly. But again, you got to be careful because if I do it somewhere, you know, this has got a lot of texture. And again, this can just really blow out the texture. But it also, once I do this, my drawing will never feel the same. And what I mean by that is once I've done this, this will always, always look uh, softened, blurred, smeared. Uh, and with graphite, it has a tendency to look dirty. Like someone, you know, has been playing in the, in the mud outside and then come and start to decide to start to smear stuff around on your page. So you got to be really careful of that. So now, some people are like, oh, I'll just put that aside and I'm done. No, you're not. Because when I, when I soften this, I have to then go back in with a tool, a pencil. Uh, sometimes you go back in with a eraser if I was creating texture, but I'm, we're not going to, we're not doing rendering for right now. We're just doing very, very basic stuff. But I would come back in here and put another layer of graphite over the top of it. And what that will happen is it'll bring just a little bit of that luster back. Not, not as much as it is. This always will look cleaner. This will always look a little dirty, a little soft, you know. And so, but if I go over it with my H pencils, especially, the H pencils have a little, the H pencils have a little more sheen. And so what happens is by going back and redeveloping the area using our, uh, our H pencils, we can get just a little bit of that luster back so it doesn't look as much like it just, you know, is dirty. Like, it doesn't look like someone just smeared their their dusty handprints over everything. Um, and we don't want that. That's a very, it has a terrible look. If you, you know, even, even people that do really soft graphite, which is really hard to do. Graphite, you know, it's, it's easier to do edges in graphite than it is to keep it nice and soft. And a, a lot of people will do a lot of blending, but you have to be so careful. And then you have to go back into it and you have to go over it and over and over it. So sometimes people think they just, oh, they smear and they're done. Nope, now the work's just beginning. We have to go back in to every area and try to take that pencil into that area and manipulate it. So I'm taking out some of those little lines uh, because it was first it was, we softened it, but now I'm going in and very judiciously going into little areas where there's a lighter line there and there's a dark, you know, maybe there's another lighter line there and I'm just filling them in oh so gently so that again it starts to you know it starts to have a nice gradation that doesn't catch the eye because there's some weird texture there that I don't want to be there what usually you want stuff is people like to say do it good enough so that you can ignore it that's what we're doing for this wall we want just enough information that we can ignore it I can, or I can go yep that looks fine and we literally ignore it and we look at other stuff because this isn't about the wall and it's just not. It's, it's about the pyramid. But in order for the pyramid to look good, we have to have enough of the value doing. And there's a slight gradation on this wall. Um, it's getting a little lighter as it comes this way. It's getting a little darker as it comes down. Uh, so there's some subtle stuff happening. And we want that. And there's just gonna be, it's got to look like we, it's been done well enough that people can then ignore it. And sometimes people get a little weird about that. We're like, I don't want people to ignore it. Well, you do want them. You want them to ignore certain areas, and you want them to look at others. That's a good thing. Okay, that's how it's like, you know, direction of the eye. Like for a magician, you know, he wants you to be watching one hand while he's, you know, doing something else with another. He, he's trying to distract you so the magic can happen. That's what we're doing. We're trying to make sure that we've got enough so that this doesn't distract. So instead you're watching the, your eyes on the pyramid. That's where the magic is happening. And so that's what's really fun about, about drawing. Is it's really just a visual sleight of hand. That's all it is. I'm going to come back down in here. I'm going to, and I'm going to try to get this just dark enough that 
this edge looks lighter. Now this has to be a gradation. Um, I was using a little bit of a tapered stroke and that's what I'm doing again. Uh, just on the down stroke I'm making a stroke great and a gradation. And I'm trying to make a gradation coming off here getting lighter as it comes over here to the left. Okay, just a little bit. Not a ton, but just enough so people start to go, ooh, look at that. We like gradations, and gradations are where it's at. Even if you're, you know, the, the Impressionists did this all the time. It doesn't matter, you know, what your style is. The, you can do all kinds of fun things with value because value begins to direct the eye where to look by making gradations. And I'm trying to make this just soft enough of a gradation coming off of this edge so that light edge looks lighter. But not too much. That may have been just a little too much. I'm going to have to come in there, fill in some of that sort of that textury. Uh, people call that the grain. If you go over just one direction, you'll start to create the, the, the grain of your stroke or the direction of your stroke. And usually you want to make it so you don't see that. You, and so you can do that by going different directions. You know, hatching. But this isn't hatching to leave the line, this is actually ha hatching to cancel out lines. So many times with hatching we're we're leaving the hatching so it looks really good and then we have you know, a certain sort of indication of the form and the line becomes part of the style. That's not what we're doing here, we're going different directions to cancel out the fact that we can feel the pencil going in only one direction or the grain or you know the pattern that you're creating. And so you can go different directions, sort of like an X. And, and if you do that, you'll start to cancel out that. If you go one direction, then go the other direction, they essentially cancel each other out. And that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. So again, we're, we've got just enough information on the surrounding stuff. That's, and that's what we're looking for, just enough. You know, that, that we go, okay, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll buy that. That looks fine. That's all we're doing. We're trying to get it just enough so people are like, yeah, that looks fine. And that's it. We're not, we're not trying to be any more, you know, we're not trying to do any more than that. All right, so we're going to just keep this up. We're going to keep, like this seems like this needed, there was like a little halo right on this edge I need to fill in. This is still pretty rough over here, so I'm going to come off the front of this and I'm going to work this a little bit. Right? And so again, by doing this, we're going to start to have, again, a little, this is going to have this gradation going this way. Um, again, this isn't about the cast shadow, so only going to care about the cash shadow coming off about this far. Um, didn't originally plan to put the, those little notations there, but they're fine. We're just trying to make what's called a little spot drawing, or a little uh, sort of a, a little. Um, some people call this a comp, but it's just a small little rough, rough, and, and, and by we wanted enough so that it looks like what we're trying to do, but we're not going to sweat it. We're not going to you know, wring our hands and lose sleep over it. And so I want you to understand that that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get just enough information that it works, but we're not going to sit here again and, and sweat it too much. Um, right there I was doing just a regular finger swing where I'm just moving back and forth. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fluidly moving through these different... Uh, again, that's faster. If you're wondering, well, why weren't you doing a feather stroke? Feather stroke takes more time just going back and forth. And actually that's it looks like, I'm, so I'm actually using a wrist swing, it's just that I'm, again, I'm touching my fingernails and a little bit of my palm, the back of my palm, onto the paper so I can just, you know, I have more control. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going ahead and starting at the darkest part, coming out a little bit, starting at the darkest part, coming out a little bit, starting at the darkest part, coming out a little bit, starting at the darkest part. Coming out a little bit. That's that's how we're we're making this work. Um, now I'm going to use the 4H, I think. So let me grab a 4H. 
Remember the 4 H is our lightest pencil. It also, this pencil will get in there and take out some of that texture. And I'm going to be using a finger swing and now I'm actually using that tapered stroke because again I'm trying to get the nuance. This is, this is the important part. Um, and we need to make it darker. We've also got this weird thing going on with the paper. So it looks like there was a line that was etched in in other words, this was in a, in a pad and I was drawing over the top of the pad, which you really shouldn't do. If you're going to treat that drawing pad right, take your paper out each time so that way you're not, you know, pressing lines into the paper underneath it. Well, it looks like I wasn't paying enough attention to that, so... And you can't tell a lot of times... I mean, they weren't... I mean, if it was dug hard, you'd really be able to see it, but these were dug, but they were light, and so you can't see those until you start making gradations, and then you're like, oh man, come on! Um, sometimes you can work with it. Sometimes you can't. Right now the jury's still out. I might be able to pull this off. And that's good news. A lot of times, even the best paper might have a little bit of a manufacturer sort of defect, some slight defect that, again, you can't see until you start making your drawing. And you almost always have to work with those a little bit. But you want to work with as few of those imperfections as possible and that's why I'm kind of a little you know a little I don't like the fact I ha I'm going to have to work a little harder with this because of the fact that it I just realized that again this was wasn't a pad that I was sketching over I probably didn't think about that when I tore it out and now I'm going to pay the price I have to work harder in other words and I don't like to have to work any any harder than uh, than I have to. Um, so again, I'm going to start to try to bring and make this like even this. This is too light. Remember, this is the shadow side. Even though this is reflected light, it has to be darker than than this stuff around it. And so that that's what's called king. I'm I'm gonna I'm going to compare values against other values. And this value, because this is supposed to be, you know, a light gray even, so that this sh if this is in shadow, the shadow should be darker than that light gray in white. So we're just, now this is just, we're, we're not drawing from a particular object yet. We will. And so if you're like, well, this seems like you're just kind of making this up. Well, no, I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to think of this is light, this is dark, this would have a gradation going from here. Um, but... Um, if the, the values are similar, like these are similar values, they're not like this is in black, this is a medium gray, um, and because of that, I can tell. Well, the the cash out technically would be darker than anything else, but I'm, I don't know that I'm going to worry about it because again, as an as an artist, I can I can change, I can change whatever I like. It's my world. It's it's my, you know, I can do whatever I want, and so. So in this, so I can, you know, again, I can, I'm going to keep basically what it means. Is I'm going to go ahead and leave the cast shadow indicated, but I'm I'm not going to go ahead and fuss over it like I would if it was more important. We just need enough of it to go. Okay, cast shadow. There must be a light source. That's what the cast shadow gives us. Oh, there's a light source. So again, I'm trying to I'm trying to make even my reflected light dark enough so it looks like it is darker than the surrounding values. So as this goes darker, these start to look lighter. There's always, whenever you have something, again, we, um, if we haven't talked about it, I thought we have, but if we haven't, I might as well mention it now. So there's something that people talk about that in, in life, especially painters will talk about this, there's no such thing as lines in nature. There's, there are only edges. Edges are created by so one something being lighter and something being darker creates an edge. Well, this edge is going to be created by the shadow being darker than the surrounding values. And that will create my edge. The edge that we then look at and go, okay, we're going to abstract that edge and turn it into a line. Understand that there are no lines in nature. And a line is actually an abstraction or a simplification of what happens with edges. When we go into value, we have to have control over our edges or we're going to have all kinds of issues happen. 
and they won't be positive issues. So, and you know, in the beginning, everyone has problem with their edges and, and you know, trying to make the value and controlling your pencils. But just be aware of that, that that's part of the, the end game. That's, that's the goal. As you continue to draw, the more you control your edges, the better your drawing will be. And you'll be able to do so much more with them. Okay, so this is going to be the reflected light. That means everything here is going to go much darker. So again, this is my, I'm, I'm keying this in. I'm starting off by making this dark enough so the edge happens. And I'm bringing this in, but understand this is actually supposed to be the lightest. So I'm actually going to start to bring a gradation in this way. I have to fill in the middle because the middle all of a sudden is starting to look too light. So again, because this is supposed to be the lightest, which means that middle's got to be the middle value, right? So it's going to be a little darker. So again, this is, and it has to be that way. Now again, if this was a black tablecloth and this was medium gray, and this was a, a, a white uh, pyramid, there's something called local value. We're not going to get a lot into that today, but a white object doesn't have as dark as shadows doesn't have as dark of values as maybe even the lightest light in a black object. So it's, you know, there's, there's values on objects depending on how light or dark they are. So if I've got like a cue ball from, you know, from, uh, you know, a, a pool cue ball, the white cue ball, and I set it next to the eight ball or the, the black billiard ball, that white billiard ball, it's dark as dark, will be lighter than the lightest light on that black billiard ball. They are both round. They both have all the different form shadows. It's just that one starts out very, very light, and the other is very, very, very dark. And so it affects the relationships of the values. That's all that's going on here. This has to be dark enough so it looks to be shadow with these surrounding values. Now I've lost some of my gradation, so I've, I've got an HB pencil. Again, I'm using my finger swing, and I'm going to just you know try to get this to start to have a gradation. Not quite there yet. We we might get there eventually. We're not quite there yet, but we're just starting to get it filled in, so that the whole thing starts to feel like it's more uniform. That's a pretty big deal because once that means all we've got to do is just push a little bit more of a gradation in here, you know, if this is dark enough, and I take my eyes out of focus, and if this is darker than this, this, or this, or that, it'll look like it's in shadow. So I'm going to come along this edge once again, still have my HB pencil, again, I'm using that, just a regular finger swing, um, actually, no, I'm not, I'm only pulling on the downstroke, so I'm actually using a uh, tapered stroke right there. So sometimes I don't even think about it. I have to kind of evaluate and go, wait, what am I doing again? Uh, because I just, I naturally have, you've done, you do it enough and everyone starts to do this where after you've done enough, you're like, ah, I need this to be lighter. I need this to be more controlled. I need this to, I just need to uh, sort of uh, to put a, a even tone down. So maybe I'll use a wrist swing or maybe it's a big area and I'll use an elbow swing. And you just, you start to get really, you know, you don't even think to where you don't even think about it. You're just, you're, you're doing whatever the, the drawing needs you to do like you're having a conversation and it's, it's saying, hey, do this and do that, and you're just listening and, and following its advice. Or you're just, that's, that's, sometimes that sounds a little, just a little too, too much or whatever, or maybe a little too, uh, you're overthinking, it, whatever. It, it just may not sound right or, or genuine enough, but what you're really doing is like saying, hey, I know what I need to do, and I've done it before and thousands of times, and I just, will, you'll mo automatically go through the motions. Just like if you, you know, if you juggle enough and, you, and you've dropped enough of the balls that you're juggling, you'll start to get, you know, pretty good at, at many times grabbing the, the, the ball out before it even hits the ground. There. And again, I, I've known a, a world-class juggler uh, back, well, you know, back in college. It was really cool to, but, and uh, he would just train and train and train and train, again, to, to keep his edge because he was a world-class juggler. He had to train in order for that to, when some you just kind of, oh, yeah, look at me, I can do this, no problem. 
he would train for hours and hours and hours a day with his juggling. If it was a light day, he'd, he'd practice for two hours. If it was, you know, something else where he was trying to, he was going to perform, the hours would go up. And so, you know, that's how you master stuff, is you just, the more you do it, the better you, you get. Uh, I, was, I was going somewhere with that. Oh, yeah, we, he you just, you know, when he would, now sometimes he couldn't, but if he was, if he was you know, say he was juggling five, I think he, he if I remember right, he could, he could juggle up to six. I think he was trying to juggle seven, or was it eight? Anyways, um, but yeah, he could, he could catch them as they kind of went astray, because he'd done it so many times. And again, the same thing happens with this. The more you, you do the different swings and stuff, like right here, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going side to side, very, very small. But just a moment ago, I was, I was only doing it on the downstroke. So side to side, that's just a regular finger swing. Only on the downstroke, that's a tapered stroke, or a feathered stroke, or a gradated stroke, whatever. But again, you'll just, you'll kind of start to, you'll do what you think you need to do. Like there's some low areas here I'm kind of tending to, and so I'm trying to be more controlled in other areas I don't care as much about, and blah, 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 blah. But we've got this where this is dark enough where this starts to feel like it has depth. Um, there's a little bit of patchiness going on here, so again, I, that's where this comes in. We're like, okay, I'm going to fill in that patch, fill in that patch, keep, you know, stick around there until I've, I've put enough value down that it starts to disappear. You know, that's, that's, that's where... The, the old saying where the rubber meets the road, uh, you know, you want to be doing that. That's that's really going to help this drawing. It's going to make it do what it needs to do. Um, and, and we want that. We certainly want that. Um, I'm looking at this now. I'm just trying to get a feel for if I've got enough information here. Again, where stuff touches the ground, that's called an occlusion shadow. And if this is the shadow side, the occlusion shadow would be darker. And this side here would be lighter. Like right now, I think this is a little dark for that occlusion shadow. And so I might have to go in there and try to lighten it in a couple places just a bit. Because it got out of hand. Uh, but I think we've got enough information where this starts to feel like it's got that depth that we want. And this starts to definitely feel like a light side. This feels like a shadow side. And this is surrounded by all this other stuff. Um, and then we have, again, that cast shadow. And again, we're not, we're just trying to, the, the cast shadow look too skinny. So I'm going to come over here. Cash also points the direction of the, of the that the light's going. So we're just going to try to keep that gradation happening. And maybe I'll grab a, a 2B as far as that goes. Now, if this is a cast shadow, uh, I, I'm going to do it just a little bit. So, just a little bit. Cast shadows are darker than form shadows. You've probably heard me say that before. So, what I'm going to do is this cast shadow has to be darker. Well, there's a little couple of bumps in here of, of darker value. So, I'm going to try to peck at them with a little tiny, uh, I'm going to make a little beak on this, this uh, needed eraser. Like there's a little line there. I can take this and, and pinch out what's called a blade. And I can just very lightly touch that line. And take that line out. So I'm just barely tapping. There's a little line right along here. It might be so soft. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But again, I can just pinch out some little blades and try to take out some of that, that, that stuff. Uh, and this is just a little bit lighter than the cast shadow. 
So, and that's what I want. We want that to have just a little bit because cast shadows are darker than form shadows. This is form shadow. This is cast shadow. And again, I could just make it into a gradation. I don't want to sit here and there's all kinds of, there's reflected light and cast shadows. There's the sha cast shadows are not just solid dark. That's not the way they work. But we're not going to, we're not going to sit there and try to get everything going on this. So I think we've got just enough where we, this looks like, oh yeah, lit side, shadow side, it's got an environment, there's a table, that's that's a wall, and we, it's not even defined enough that I know that it's a table and it's a wall, but when it, it does look like there's two kind of two different planes here. That's all we need. That's all we want. So again, we have light tone, or light values. We have highlight, which is right along that edge. We have dark tones, which are here, and then the reflected light Again, I, I could probably, you know, play with this a little bit more to try to get a little bit more of a gradation. Got to be careful. You don't want a line light right here. If it, it looks like that's a line, you have to soften that, turn it into a gradation, because otherwise it'll, it'll just kill the, the illusion. Again, I'm using a tapered stroke. More and more and more of a tapered stroke. But again, we have so we have dark tone reflected light. We have light value highlight, so that's all four that we can see. There's a middle value that would be on the, the back right side, so this one back here. The back left, this one actually be darker, and the back left would be a little bit lighter because of reflected light hitting the wall and hitting that, that back left that's on this side and the back right that's around the corner over here. So here's our pyramid, all right? We've done four so far. We've done the, we did the cube, we did the sphere, we did the cone and now we've done the pyramid. We're going to come back and finish with the, um, we're going to show you how to do a cylinder and then after the cylinder we'll actually do something like an, a pair. you putting all this together and using photographic reference to try to then draw something using all these form shadows. But this is the idea. Again we have a gradation going lighter, a little darker here, getting lighter as it goes here, a little darker here, getting lighter as it comes down, this darker here, then getting lighter as it comes down. This darker here, getting lighter as it comes down. Uh, we kind of lost our tip. And so we could try to come in here really quickly and see if we could bring our tip back in here, make this nice and sharp, um, like so. It looks like our if we did that, our edge is actually missing. So we need to go ahead and change the angle of this slightly. like so. This is now bulging out a little bit, so I've got to come over here. I'm using a tapered stroke and I'm going just along that that edge to try to crisp that edge up. Okay. So again, now we've got our little we've got a little pyramid. So go ahead and hopefully you've been able to follow along. Uh, stop the you know stop the camera whenever you need or stop the you know, my, the video as much as you need as you're drawing your, your little pyramid. This pyramid is only like two and a half, no, it's three inches, it's about three inches tall. So, but it's small enough so we can still practice these ideas, but we can do it much more quickly. All right? So go ahead and give that a shot. I wish you all the best. Have a good one.